Hey Guardians, I just want to let everyone know that I do have both a Twitch and a Twitter, and I'm very active on both. Feel free to come give me a follow on both, links in the description. Hey Guardians, so we're doing something a little bit different today. With content being a little bit dry right now, and me not really having any weapons that I'm super excited to review, I decided just to talk about some of my PvP loadouts that I use, and if the reception is good, then we'll do more of these videos. But I'm starting with this one mainly because I just kind of wanted to get it out of the way. This isn't a loadout I particularly have a lot of fun with, but it is a very effective loadout, and there's lots of ways you can change it up to make it even better. This loadout is just very easy to use. Pretty much anyone could pick up something like this and be effective with it. It's very much just plug and play. So this is my rat loadout. Uh, this loadout is meant for very, very passive play, which is one of the reasons I don't use it all that often anymore. I am someone who tends to like to play more aggressively, and this loadout really isn't meant for that. I suppose you could use it for that purpose, but there's just other setups that are better for if you're going to be aggressive. But I also refer to this loadout as my tired loadout, and what I mean by that is either A, I'm tired of the game's bullshit, or B, I'm just tired, right? I had a long day at work, whatever the case may be, and I just want to use a loadout that doesn't really require me to think too much, but that is still very effective. And I'll explain how all this works. We'll have some gameplay at the end as well. But I have used this loadout in Trials, I've gone flawless with it a couple of times, I've used it in Cop very effectively, and I've used it in Sixes also very effectively. And the way that this works, really, it's not so much a loadout meant for just, like, hardcore trying to slay out. You'll definitely get a lot of defeats with it. But the idea really is mainly just harassing the enemy team, annoying them, making them weak, so that your team can get some easy cleanups, so on and so forth. And so the way that this works is you want to stay with and ideally a bit behind your team and just be constantly tagging people with your weapon, your abilities, and just making for easy cleanups for your team. Which means that you'll still get some very high defeat games and all that, and you can get some pretty high kills with this because, like I said, it's just a very effective loadout. Now, of course, since this is a rat build, we are on Void Hunter, big surprise, mainly for the use of invis and smoke bombs. So Vanishing Step, for obvious reasons, dodge, I go invis, I go off the radar. I use Marksman's dodge on this because I just find, for whatever reason, Gambler's dodge doesn't feel as good to me on Void. So I just use Marksman's dodge because it also refills my weapon. Strafe Jump as well. Sometimes I prefer tr uh, Triple Jump on Void, but for the in this instance, we're just using Strafe Jump. Smoke Bomb because, of course, it's our only option, but also Smoke Bomb is actually pretty broken. This is a very, very powerful melee ability. When you throw it, it will ping the enemy radar, so you can use it for radar manipulation, use it to bait people, make them, you know, potentially make a bad push, bait them around corners, that sort of thing. And if someone runs into it, it will slow them and weaken them, which means then you could get an easy kill with a grenade, your weapon, whatever the case may be, which will then proc Stylish Executioner, which will then make you invisible and give you wall hacks. As far as grenades go, I am using Suppressor Grenade just because ability spam annoys me. Hopefully that gets fixed on March 5th to a degree at least, and supers annoy me, and so this kind of allows me to be the fun police. The Pocket Nuke, aka Scatter Grenades, are probably more useful, but Suppressor Grenades are still very, very good. Minus the Forerunner Catalyst, this is kind of the closest thing we have to a frag grenade. Throw it around corners, bounce it off a wall, that sort of thing. Say you make someone weak, they duck behind cover, they have a wall behind them, bounce it off the wall into their cover, it will tag them, and either weaken them so that you can get a push, or if you damage them enough, it'll just clean them up. Plus, of course, it can be used to prevent someone from using their abilities or take someone out of a super, that sort of thing. And this can actually be really helpful. It won me a trials match last weekend when I just threw it as a titan was pushing the objective and he was not able to use his bubble and we were able to win the match because of that. Also, it is genuinely just a fun grenade to use. If you get a kill from bouncing it off of a wall or around a corner or something, it's very satisfying. Fragments are mostly just there for stats. However, Echo of Vigilance, this is a broken, broken fragment. This thing is insane. You know, One-Eyed Mask, some of the OGs may remember when One-Eyed Mask was the meta, the main reason being you kill someone and get an overshield. This basically does that for all subclasses as long as you're on Void. You get into a gunfight, your shields get broken. As long as you win that gunfight, you get an overshield. Super is just the deadfall tether, mainly because Spectrals is kind of mid, also very slow cooldown. 
and Mobius Quiver is terrible. This is an awful super in PvP. The tethers just aren't as effective, and the projectiles have awful tracking, so you're probably not going to get a kill with it anyway. With this, though, if someone's pushing me with a super or something like that, I can put it on a wall, bait someone in. As well as you can just bait in entire groups of enemies and get kills with it. I've done that before. This can be a very, very effective super if you use it properly. Mm, they got heavy again. I think I can help you here. So. Double down. You captured zone B. Hey, dude, you, a tether is the fuck? <laughs> oh shit. That's a god tether. <laughs> My god. I knew exactly where they were going to come from, so I just said. Uh... Now, outside of that, my weapon of choice here is the Belisarius. I used to use this loadout a lot, and I would usually use it with no time, and no time is definitely the more effective weapon for this, mainly just because I don't know what it is with no time, but despite its relatively low aim assist stat, no time aims itself. No time is one of the easiest primaries in the game to use. It kind of surprises me I don't see it that often anymore, but I'm using Belisarius just because, I don't know, I just find it to be a bit more entertaining. Plus, this does have more range than no time. This has around 42 meters of range. I think no time has more like 38-ish meters, give or take a little. So this will outrange weapons like no time. It will outrange 120 hand cannons, at least by a little bit. Plus, this is kind of a cringe loadout. And when I use a cringy loadout, I tend to prefer to use something that I at least find interesting. And while Belisarius at its core is still very much a rat rifle, um, it's at least a bit more interesting than something like a high impact pulse. This has taken me a lot of getting used to. I'm still having to get used to that four round burst. And that four round burst is one of the reasons it really is not as effective as something like no time because because like with no time, that three round burst just comes out so fast that you can peak shot with like no time or messenger or anything of the sort pretty much just as effectively as you can with a hand cannon. You really can't with this just because of how slow that four round burst is. You have to commit to your gunfights a little bit more and that can be a little bit frustrating. Plus it's also a bit of a challenge because with that slower, longer burst, you have to track your targets a bit more as opposed to something like no time where I don't really feel like I have to track my target with no time. I honestly Honestly, most of the time just feel like I can just squeeze the trigger and trust that all three shots are going to land. And that isn't the case with Belisarius, so I'm still having to train my aim quite a bit with this thing. But regardless, I'm starting to get used to it, and it is a very effective weapon. It hits really hard, it flinches pretty hard, it does its job really, really well. Plus, I really like this roll, and I think I prefer high cal. I know most people would like ricochet, but because of that longer burst, I think the extra flinch is just more helpful here. Keep away for obvious reasons, more range, faster reload. Head seeker, again, for obvious reasons, more forgiveness. Range masterwork, which is fine. Stability or handling would also be good here. Fitted stock, which I also like. I can go hockey breach armaments if I'm having trouble with barricades. Secondary is a shotgun. Really just because I like shotguns, there are for sure better choices as a backup weapon these days um, than shotguns. Compass Rose is just one that I've been experimenting a bit with lately. I don't know what it is about this shotgun, but it feels a bit more consistent than something like Retold despite missing a opening shot. Plus Vorpal's pretty nice. I've shut down quite a few supers with Vorpal. But there are definitely better choices than a shotgun. Probably don't want to go off with sniper rifle to like double up on long range, but you could go with something like a wave frame GL or a fusion rifle, that sort of thing. But I like shotguns, so I'm using a shotgun. This loadout does also work very well with a double primary loadout. So you could even just have like a sidearm or a submachine gun or something here. Take care of your long range and mid range. Take care of your close range. But really the big star here as far as like weapons and armor go is Knucklehead. Now, previously I used this with Foe Tracer. Foe Tracer's wall hacks got merged into Knucklehead. So I use Knucklehead instead because the wall hacks are the main reason that I use it. Having my radar up all the time is also very nice. Don't get me wrong. It makes it really difficult for people to flank you, but it's mainly for the wall hacks which is just useful for a lot of reasons. Once someone is tagged by the wall hacks, and those wall hacks, by the way, last for a long time, um, probably a bit too long. This helmet is a little bit broken, but it can make weapons that are good for peak shot shooting, such as fighting high impact pulse rifles, hand cannons, um, bows, of course, a bit easier, just because if they duck behind cover and decide to try to peak shot you, you'll know exactly when they're going to re-peak you and you can just pull the trigger at the perfect time. There we go.
Come on, I'm weak. For that reason, this has also in some ways become something of my anti-bow loadout just because of how nice uh, the wall hacks are coupled with invis. Of course, it's less helpful against Wish Ender because Wish Ender has wall hacks, but against other bows, it works just fine. Heavy is pretty much whatever you want. Armor mods are mostly just there for stats and to boost my weapon. So strand targeting, strand dexterity, Triple unflinching because, I god, I hate flinch in this game so much. It, re it needs a reduction just across the board. Solar Holster, just to keep Compass Rose loaded. I'm still kind of reworking this loadout. I used to use it uh, quite a bit during the no time meta especially. I don't use it quite as much anymore, and it does definitely need some refining, so I will probably drop one of the Solar Holsters. Uh, maybe even both, since I don't really feel like this is a loadout where I'm playing fast enough where I need my shotgun in an emergency all that often. But it can still be nice to have, but I will probably end up dropping it for one of these. Class item is just, of course, distribution and bomber. Just to help me with my grenades and to keep my dodge up. As far as weapons in general go, there are a lot of weapons that work very well with this loadout. Like I said, no time. Um, it works very well with igneous hammer or pretty much any high range hand cannon. Um, it works very well with scout rifles. Um, of course, it works well with bows. Not that I'm going to encourage the use of bows. I know they're getting nerfed. I'm not convinced that the nerf will really be enough, but we'll see what happens. But also, sniper rifle, forerunner. Um, I actually do also really like this on 180 scouts with box breathing. It's very deadly with this combo. But Belisarius, just because... I find this weapon to be kind of entertaining. That's the big reason that I use it. So why did I decide to break this loadout again? Because like I said, I used to use this quite a bit during the no time meta because it just worked really well there. And despite being someone who likes to be aggressive in how I play, I've just pulled this out again because in the current sandbox, it's just very useful. Obviously for the reasons I described against bows, but also against, uh, you know, Titans with SMGs since Belisarius allows me to stay very far out of a submachine gun's effective range. Couple that with suppressor grenades, making it sometimes a little bit tougher for a Titan to get to get an overshield or pop a bubble, as well as smoke bombs. If a Titan is pushing me really hard with their unending Tempest and PKs, I can just back up around a corner or something a little bit, throw the smoke bomb where I was, and a lot of times they'll just run into it, and depending on how far away I am, I'll either just kill them with my pulse rifle or I'll just shotgun them. So it's very effective for that use as well. Plus being able to play passively just means that I am very much staying out of the range of SMGs, which is also very helpful. Something that I've heard a lot lately about is how if SMGs get another nerf that uh, <laughs> the sandbox will become very passive. And I want to point out the sandbox outside of the SMG Titans is already very passive. There's a reason 120 hand cannons have come back into favor so much. There's a reason that bows have come into favor so much. And that is because with SMGs being so far out of bounds, it makes playing aggressively with anything that isn't an SMG a real challenge and a very frustrating one. And the reality is that if you're playing against a bunch of Titans with PKs and SMGs, the easiest way to counter that is to just play range, be very passive, and just sit back. Such as back in Guardian Games last year when we had the class versus class PvP mode, me and a buddy of mine played that pretty much every day. And whenever we would match a team of Titans with like PK's Immortal, we knew exactly what to do. We would take off the hand cannons, we would put on no time to explain, and just sit in the back of the map. If they, if they pushed us really hard, we would just rotate away, play long range, and just pick them apart. Eventually we would wear them down, and you can absolutely dismantle teams of hyper-aggressive SMG Titans that way. So that is the other reason that I've been using this a lot. It's just a very solid counter to uh, SMGs in the current sandbox. And I know target lock is getting nerfed next week, but something to keep in mind is that target lock was a part of the problem and a huge part of the problem, but it wasn't the entire problem. The SMG meta that we're in did not start with target lock immortal. It started back in like, I think it was season of the Seraph when the Ikelos became craftable, as well as I believe that was when Teraba was a huge part of that, but people found out if they could just combine those with PKs, that even without target lock, that was still a insanely broken loadout. So the reality is that even 
with target lock, it seems getting completely nuked in PvP. SMGs still have too much range and not nowhere near enough recoil, so they're probably still going to be the hard meta. That's my prediction. Anyway, I could be wrong. When the changes hit next week, we'll be streaming and testing a bunch of different weapons and seeing how everything feel, feels. But until then, I'm going to assume that SMGs are going to continue to be the meta, and this is going to probably continue to be one of my counters to it. But yeah, I just wanted to get this build out of the way just quickly because, again, it really isn't one of my favorites. It's a very effective one, but it's not one that I find particularly fun to play. If this video is received well, I will show my favorite PvP build for my next video. And this is the build that I use for very aggressive gameplay. I'm going to be talking about this a little bit more in a video about aggressive hand cannon builds that I'm working on as well. But just know that speed loaders and ace were practically made for each other, and they really are the stars of the build. So if this video is received well, then this is what I'm going to cover next. But for now, I'll leave you with some gameplay of the rat build. If you enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful, if you use a similar build or are planning on giving this one a try, then do me a favor, hit that like button, leave me a comment letting me know. And also, as always, the best ways that you can support this channel are one, to hit subscribe with the bell icon, and also to just share it with anyone who you think might find it interesting, entertaining, friends, family, whatever the case may be, you get the idea. Also, this gameplay isn't particularly anything insane, it's just mostly there for proof of concept, that sort of thing, but for now, I will see you all in the next video. Peace, Guardians. Okay. That four round burst is really kind of throwing me off in some ways. That guy's got to stop doing that. So much range on this thing, though. Just come back up there. Okay, looks like they're moving to A, maybe. Got a rift. There's Mr. Sparrow again. Okay, buddy, you gotta stop that. No, <laughs> you, you gotta stop that shit. Oh, are we shooting now? Seriously, what? Why? <laughs> Why? I definitely have to pace my bursts a bit more. That would probably be helpful here. Someone going for A. There's no one with them though. Moments like that where I really like Stylish Executioner, though. You can save your life, knowing when the horde is coming for you. Where's his buddy I saw over there?
I actually thought he might get me for a second there. Not gonna lie. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the the sparrows. Okay, we cannot fight that. So I think we're just actually going to move away from B. Granted, this still is a fairly risky location just because they can flank really easily. Lots of team shots, which is good. Not worried about final blows. Half the point of this build is to just weaken people, make things difficult for the opposing team. But that works. Okay. I'm gonna make kind of a risky play here. That worked out okay. I would say, what is my team needs to help me out here a little bit? Jump on the flag. That is not where I wanted that to go at all, actually. Okay, that was a little close. Okay. <laughs> Goodness. Staying crouched a lot, just to try to stay off the radar. I'm not overly concerned if we win this match, it's not trials. Like I said, lots of team shots, kind of what happens with these pulses a lot, these aggressive frames. I do want to back up that. Trying to keep everyone weak whenever I see someone. Teammates not being super helpful right now. Okay, we got a flag. I'm trying to decide where I want to put this tether. I 
right there will work. Ah, uh, that is so unfortunate. Good job, teammates. Way to capitalize on that suppressor. Machete, which is very nice. Lots of range. I genuinely do think that uh, Bubble and Well should just be completely disabled in PvP. messing with my radar. I just want to pull him out of there because he's annoying me. That dude's got to stop doing that. Did he just leave? The match was ending, what the hell? Yeah, so you can see it works really well. <laughs> 